we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At least that is what we're supposed to be doing. Amen? Amen. This season is called what? Christmas. Oh. And why is the what is the reason why we celebrate Christmas? The words of our Lord and Savior. Now, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Right about that. That is the reason we're supposed to celebrate Christmas. Amen? Amen. Now, Christmas trees, presents. Turkey, ham, stuffings, candy, yams, mashed potatoes, string beans, Amen. and all the <laughs> and all the above are still things we look forward to at Christmas, right? Amen. And I personally love this season. I love Christmas, but I have had to be very intentional over the last four or five years, in the midst of all my celebrations and everything, to stop and really celebrate the one whose birthday I'm supposed to be celebrating. Because if you're not careful, you can be celebrating everybody else. Especially if you have grandchildren. Grandparents know what I'm talking about. They tend to go all out. They do more for their grandkids at Christmas than their own children. Yes. But that's what grandkids will do. But what I'm saying is, at some point, we have to stop and take a moment to really remember why we are celebrating. Like I said, one of the reasons why we give gifts at Christmas is because we receive the greatest gift of all which was God's Son, Jesus Christ. And yes, celebrate by all means, but at some point, let's give him some glory and some praise on his birthday. After all, it's his birthday. If it was your birthday and you had a big party going on and nobody was celebrating you, and they was having all the fun and wasn't making it about you, you would be highly upset. <laughs> I right or wrong? Right. right. At some point you'll say, hello, I'm over here. It's my party. <laughs> Y'all having more fun than me. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be about me. I right or wrong? Right. So, I want to remind you, in the midst of all your having fun, this is a special time and a special moment to just take some time and celebrate Jesus whose birthday it is. Amen? Amen? Amen. <clears throat> I want to answer some questions this morning that I'm going to ask the questions and answer them myself. All right? Because those of us that are believers and that are Christians, we need to understand why we even celebrate Christmas. And to understand that, we have to understand why Jesus had to be born in the first place. So, is it okay if I talk about that a little bit this morning? Mm -hmm, please. Why are we even celebrating the one that we say we're celebrating? So why was Jesus born? We're celebrating in this season the birthday of Jesus. Now, I'm not going to get into no technical stuff on why it was on the 25th of December or why even if it was in December, period. All I'm going to say is this is the time that we're going to celebrate it and that's as much as I'm going to say about that. The fact of the matter is we are celebrating the birth of Jesus. Amen? Amen? And it needs to be celebrated. We recognize that he was born. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the, important of, the, the importance of that birth. Why was it necessary? 
And those of us that are believers, we need to have an understanding of why that birth was even necessary. Why it was that Jesus' destiny was to enter a chaotic and sin-sick world. Why did he come? He came because there really was no other option. Jesus had to be born. Jesus had to be born because of mankind's sin. God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden, a place where they had an abundance of food, the animals were tamed, and God himself was their teacher and visited them frequently in that place. Can you imagine? We lost that place. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. They had the gift of free choice, the ability to decide whether they would obey God or not. So what went wrong? Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, and I'm going to read the first seven verses. Genesis chapter 3, and I'm starting at verse 1. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we, must, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat, God said. You must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the servant replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt ashamed at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. <coughs> the devil appealed to Eve's vanity convincing her she could be as God himself, knowing good and evil. This, appeal, this appealed to her vanity. So she ate the forbidden fruit and then gave some to her husband. Why did Satan's deception of Adam and Eve mean that Jesus had to be born? Jesus had to be born because Adam and Eve sinned that act of obedience separated them and us from God. That act separated us from God. Had Jesus not come, mankind would still be separated from God. So that's one of the reasons why Jesus had to be born. <coughs> Jesus had to be born because God wanted to reveal his own character to humanity. He wanted to reveal his righteous character to Adam and Eve and to all mankind so we could become like him in mind and spirit. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, it says, then God said, let us make my human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God gave Adam and Eve the opportunity to embrace his divine wisdom because they were made in his image and his likeness. Tragically, they followed the father of lies, Satan, and both ate of the tree of good and evil. This wrong choice, this rebellious act against the creator, severed their close relationships. Hence, all mankind that followed. Are you all hearing me, family? Mm -hmm. Because of that disobedience, God cast them out of the Garden of Eden, cutting them off from having access to the tree of life. Go over to Genesis 3, verse 20, 22. It says, Then the Lord said, Look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out and take fruit from the tree of life and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed a mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. He didn't want us to stay in a bad state, and eat, eating of the tree of life would have made us stay in that state. Are we understanding what's going on here? Because we're talking about why Jesus had to be born. So he guarded that, that tree that he might eat of it. Jesus had to be born because Adam and Eve failed to carry out God's mandate to glorify him in their lives. So it left it was left to the Son of God thousands of years later to ultimately fulfill the divine revelation of God's character and purpose for man. It had to come through Jesus. He wanted it to come through Adam and Eve, but they disobeyed. But they had the true ultimate love, which was choice. And he wanted them to choose him, but they want, rather they choose the father of lies. Jesus had to be born also to remove the sins of man through a perfect sacrifice. A perfect sacrifice. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all offered sacrifices to God. Hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, God revealed through his faithful servant Moses a religious system that included animal sacrifice and offerings. Why did the need for a perfect sacrifice mean that Jesus had to be born? It was because the early physical sacrifices were imperfect and a perfect sacrifice was needed. They could not take away the penalty for sin. I need a reader. Somebody please find Hebrews chapter 10. I want, I want you to read from verse 4 to 7. Hebrews chapter 10. Yes. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats really to take away sins. That is why Christ said, as he came into the world, O oh God, the blood of bulls and goats cannot satisfy you. So you have made ready this body of mine for me to lay as a sacrifice upon your altar. You were not satisfied with the animal sacrifices slain and burnt before you as offerings for sin. Then I said, see, I have come to do your will, to lay down my life just as the scripture said that I would. That's right. It became obvious that animal sacrifice wasn't sufficient. So Jesus had to lay down his life. He was perfect, never committed sin, never did anything wrong. He was perfect in every way. There was no imperfections about him. And that is what was needed as a, as a, to be a sacrificial lamb for us. Amen? Amen. Jesus had to be born to make his spirit 
available to all men. Not only did Jesus have to be born, but he had to pay the penalty of sin through his own death. Then he had to be resurrected to ascend to the Father and become our high priest. Only then would humanity be able to receive the benefit from the incredible gift of God, which was the Holy Spirit. Now you know when Jesus was here on earth, he was in one place. Amen? Amen. But once he died and left, he told us that he would send a comforter. But the Spirit of God wasn't limited to that one place. There are people all over had access to him. When Jesus was here, only those in that vicinity had access to him. But the Holy Spirit, Jesus had to go so the Holy Spirit could come so all of us could have access to him. On the day of Pentecost, only a few weeks after Jesus died and was resurrected, God poured out his spirit on the followers of Jesus. <laughs> Peter said in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, anybody know what that says? Acts chapter 2 verse 38. I'm going to read it. He said, Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of excuse me, the Holy Spirit. So once Christ died, the Holy Spirit came, and we were all able to get it, those of us that believe and receive. Amen? Jesus also had to be born to redeem mankind. The salvation of mankind was dependent on Jesus coming to earth and living a perfect life. Isn't that something? He came to earth and still lived a perfect life. How many perfect people in here? They all jump at once. <laughs> no perfect people? I try. <laughs> wow. I try real hard, believe me. <sighs> yeah. He lived a perfect life. That is why he became the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. For every disobedience by every man and woman who ever lived and will live. Jesus had to be born to be our Redeemer. God in his infinite mercy ordained his plan of redemption for sinful man through Christ. Turn your Bibles to 1 Peter. And I'm going to read 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 18 to 20. First Peter chapter 1, 18 to 20. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began, but he has now revealed him to you in these last days. You see why we can't figure God out? Mm -hmm. Jesus was never an afterthought. He was already in the plan. 
because he knew once he gave his creation who he loved so much, that choice to either choose him or not, at some point we were going to go down another rabbit hole. But he loved us too much to let us stay there. So he put a plan in place, which was Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why you can't figure God out. He was, he is, and he shall be. The beginning and the end. He knows everything. And that is why the scripture says, even in our mess, somehow, God works all those things out for our good. I had to try and explain that to somebody last night who, for lack of a better word, got too much degrees. <laughs> you know when you're too smart, you can't. And they couldn't get it. They said, well, if he already knew, then we don't have no choice. I said, no. You don't understand. You're putting God in the wrong place. That's how much higher than he is. He, he didn't make you do what you wanted to do. But he knew that you were going to do it. <laughs> he didn't stop you. But even though you mess up, somehow, he was prepared to turn your mess into something good for you. But how is that possible when I still didn't get what I wanted? I said, well, a lot of times he still doesn't give us what we want. But when he turns that into our good, it's the lesson that we learn. Sometimes you've got to learn a lesson from that. And that's the good you get. Because <coughs> that lesson has prepared you for the next time you get greedy and that selfishness come upon you and you want to do it. You think, nah, last time this happened, it didn't go so well for me. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? But you learn that lesson. And that is working things out for our good. Because now you don't have to stick your hand in the fire. The first time you say don't do it, the fire looked good, so you just have to stick your hand in the fire and get burned. <laughs> but he healed you. But you learn a lesson. So next time, now for your good, you won't do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not all about always giving us what we want, but it's about teaching us the lessons in life that we need in order to continue to live the best life that God has for us. Isn't that wonderful? For those of us that are believers, we need to understand this. That's how God works. It's not always about getting what you want. That's the problem now. That's why we end up in sin. Because we wanted everything. And it sounds good. An old slew foot, you know how to paint the picture. Amen? Amen? But God wants to teach us, no matter how much that, how good that picture look, follow my words. I have given you the word. Don't choose the picture over what I say. Amen? Amen. Why? Does sin require a redeemer? The Bible tells us in Romans. Romans 6 and 23 says what? Yep. 6 and 23. You all got it? It says, for the wages of sin is death. What the what? free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Then Romans 3 and 23 is that scripture you're talking about Larry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Romans 3 Romans 3 for everyone has sinned we all fall short of God's glorious standard. All have sinned and fallen short. I'll say that again. All have sinned and fallen short. No matter how much makeup you put on, or how you cut your hair and shave, and dress up in Versace, and 
all the rest of them. Amen? And how nice you smell. All have sinned. And we all need a redeemer. Therefore, all have earned the death penalty for sin. People speak of human rights, yet the only right anyone really has earned is the right to eternal death. But God has made allowance for sinners to be redeemed or brought back from that place of death and the penalty by a redeemer whose birthday we're getting ready to celebrate. Amen? Amen. Romans 5 calls Jesus the second Adam in contrast to the first. The original man. The first Adam brought sin into the world. Romans 5.12 Because Adam sinned, brought sin into the world, and sin was placed on all men. The second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, brought redemption, reconciliation, and the hope of eternal life. We're going to read that. Romans 5, 6 to 10. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who was especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Amen? Amen. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has now made us friends with God. See, sometimes we need to touch bases with this to remember why we celebrate Christmas. Amen? This is why we celebrate. It's a, it's a serious thing. And yes, have a wonderful time. Have a good time. Enjoy. But don't forget this. This is why we celebrate. Because we all needed a Savior. We all needed redemption. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. iniquity. This ain't about being a good person. And who calling you good? People. When God says, our best is what? Don't be right. <laughs> our best. Don't let man fill your head because they like the way you smell or like the clothes you wear or like the way you look. And then they fill your head and think you all that in a bag of chips. You need Jesus. Because from, from the day you come with your mother's womb and you take that breath, <coughs> you were sinful. Born in it. Amen. And anybody... Who doubt that? Just check on the baby right there in your hand. You take something out of his hand. He'll slap you in your face. <laughs> eh! Well, where I come from? You ain't teach him how to do that. It's in him. Selfishness. Born with it. What you taking this from me for? And if it start there, it only get worse as we get old. You all ever think about that? Yeah. So you know, by the time you get 30 years old, you don't even want nobody to look at you sideways. <laughs> or tell you what to do. What? <laughs> Parents, you love that little coochie, 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 coo. And then you buy clothes for them and everything, and then one day you buy something, and they look at you and say, I don't like that. I don't want that. <laughs> Anybody know what they're talking about? <laughs> they want their own stuff. Born in sin. And we all need a Savior. We need it. And that is why we need a Redeemer. And we were all... Our penalty was death. Since the wages of sin is death, redemption requires the sacrificial death of a Redeemer. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why we need a Redeemer. Jesus was also born 
Because man needed to be saved. Salvation is necessary because we are all sinners. Someone may ask the question, why do we have to be saved? Saved from what? I consider myself to be a pretty good person since I've made a few mistakes, but at least I'm not as bad as some. So why do I have to be saved? You ever heard that before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I never do that. I, that's them. I've never done that. <laughs> Always can find someone you're better than. <laughs> and then you don't want to look in the mirror. Are you better than that person? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Ask them these questions. Have you ever stolen anything? Have you ever lied? Have you had lustful thoughts? Had sex outside of marriage? Been disobedient to your parents? Had hateful thoughts? Taken the Lord's name in vain? Wanted something that belongs to somebody else? Anybody know what that sounds like? Sounds like a Ten Commandments saying, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Have you ever disobeyed any of God's commands? Whether you've done one or all, the Bible says that makes you a sinner. And if you're still denying that, let's go to his word. 1 John. Because you may think I'm just saying this. Let's see what the word says. First John chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 8 to 10. First John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Anybody Bible, anybody Bible says anything different from that? No. So then, we're all sinners. And we cannot deny when the Bible says, well, if we're all sinners, then our wages should be what? Yeah. <laughs> but he came to pay the price for us. A spotless man, a perfect sacrifice, whose blood was shed and paid the price instead of us. That is why. Jesus had to be born. And that is whose birthday we are celebrating. <clears throat> Do you understand what I'm saying, family? So you can't forget the reason. Were you saying something? Yeah. This scripture just literally hit me for the first time. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar. And his word is not true. That is really powerful. We claim we have not sinned to make Jesus to be a liar and the Lord is not us. You see why you need to read the word? Because when you carry it on, sometimes you don't even know what God's word says and you think you're getting away with something when you're acting in contrary to what God's word says. We have to be intentional in trying to line our lives up with the Word of God as much as possible. But a lot of people fail in that area simply because they don't know what the Word of God says. <laughs> but when you read that, then you understand the seriousness of it. And then you understand why we need to celebrate Jesus' birthday. Because He came 
so that he could pay the wages for our penalty. He paid the wages, which was death. And that is why he was born. And yes, that is a reason to celebrate. So that's why I'm taking the time to say all these things so when we don't get so caught up in all the other stuff that we really forget whose birthday we're really supposed to be celebrating. And we understand why. Amen? The Bible tells us that we're all sinners who fall short of God's glory. Even as a baby, we're covered in sin. Salvation is necessary because you are a sinner and they need to be saved from your sinful condition. That is what salvation means. Deliverance from the power of penalty of sin. Redemption. And that is why Jesus was born to pay that penalty. He was born to redeem us back to God. Lots of things in the world can be redeemed and we understand what it means to be redeemed. People redeem cans, tin, metal, copper, all sorts of stuff and they get something <coughs> from it. People turn in coupons at the grocery store. We understand that, right? Yes. And they receive discounts. But the most important thing that you can turn in is that old sinful person that you once were and become a brand new born again believer in God and be the person that God wants you to be. This is the most important thing in life because if you are not redeemed, you will have to face the penalty of sin. Jesus was born, so you won't have to. Accept him. Ask him to come into your heart. That is why he was born. And that is whose birthday we're celebrating in this season. Amen. So should we celebrate Christmas? Yes. yes. We celebrate because we understand the depth of what that really means. The reason, the true reason for this season. The birth of Christ has been commercialized and secularized. <coughs> and in many cases, the true meaning of Christmas has been lost. But that is why you're here this morning. So I could remind you. Amen? Amen. And after hearing this, you can't say you didn't know. Because <laughs> I told you. You need to know. You can get caught up. Get caught up and forget whose birthday you really are celebrating. And everybody getting everything except him. He can't even have five minutes of your time. But everybody getting presents. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. We give because we got first. The I've best often, gift, which was Jesus. I've often thought of taking the cake for Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? So it's okay to give. It's okay to give. But remember why you're giving. Do we understand? And the thing is, you have to be intentional about it. Otherwise, you'll just be celebrating each other. We will turn it into just celebrating each other. Do you hear what I'm saying, family? At some point, we have to celebrate Him. Amen. At some point, <laughs> And you got to be deliberate about it. That's right. Or it won't happen. It just simply won't happen. Mm -hmm. 
And we can't let this opportunity pass us by because it's a wonderful thing. And we should celebrate. But we need to understand and be grateful for it and happy. And yes, it's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a joyous thing. But he needs to be included in his birthday. That's right. Hmm. Amen? Amen. Just to remind you. <coughs> Many times, even sometimes, if you listen to the Christmas story, that's distorted. But we know that babe in that cradle in that manger, <coughs> what he truly represents to us. And we are grateful. We thank God for his son Jesus and him being the savior of our world. Like the scripture says, he will save his people from their sins. And we knew that he would grow up and one day become that man that would be nailed to the cross and die for our sins, paying the wages of death, the wages of sin, which is death. But he defeated death, he was resurrected, rose from the grave, and is now seated in heaven as our high priest. And he's waiting on those of us who know him. Because we have that hope that if we die in Christ, we also shall be raised with him to spend eternity. Amen? Amen. Eternity Amen. with him. Yes, that's cause for celebration. Yes. Amen. That's cause for celebration. And don't forget it. It's a happy thing. And we need to let others know. It's a wonderful thing. But let's just not get caught up in the bubblies and, and the stuffing and the candy arms. And that is all that is good. Amen. <laughs> but at some point, let's celebrate the one whose birthday we're supposed to be celebrating. Amen? I mean, I keep saying that because it's so it's easy to get caught up and forget him. Because let's, let's be honest. When Christmas comes, you think of gifts. You think about giving. And when you're in the mall, you ain't thinking Jesus. You're thinking gifts and what you could buy and what prices you could get. You got a list. Mary, Joe, Susan, John. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reality. Yes, it is. And if you're not intentional, you won't even take five minutes in that one day to say, Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for the gift that you gave me. <coughs> thank you for coming and paying the penalty for my sinful soul. And I want to remember you and give you praise and give you glory and exalt you. Let me give you a few minutes. I, I'm out here getting ready to give everybody else. Got a whole list of what I got for people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me give you something. Amen? Amen. We go to him all the time. Give me, give me, give me, God. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Let's, let's just thank him. Give him some praise. Mm -hmm. And be a thankful people that Jesus came. And that is whose birthday we are celebrating. Amen? Amen? He is the true reason for the season. So we need to be able to lift our voices and say, Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Jesus Christ is born. Amen? Amen. We shout at all other things. <laughs> we can raise our voice at all other things. You That's raise your right. voice and say, hallelujah! And people will look at you crazy. Mm -hmm. I crazy. I crazy for Jesus. Amen. And I think of what God has done for me and where he's brought me from. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> God for Jesus. If I start thinking back of where God bring me from, I'll break a front and round this place. 
Because you don't know like you don't know like I know what God has done for you. So when I celebrate his birth, I'm happy. Because he did for me what you can't do for me. You can look at me cross eyed out your eye on I don't care. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, I am here because of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 When everyone else saw the bad in me, mm. he saw the good in me. Amen. Amen. Yes, I can celebrate. That's right. I know why I celebrate. Mm -hmm. Do you know why you celebrate? Mm -hmm. And I'm here to remind you why we should celebrate. Because the Son of God was born that he may save us from our sins. Amen. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and praise the Lord. Yes, At Lord. some point in your celebrations, mm -hmm. set a time aside yes, to remember mm -hmm. whose birthday you really are celebrating. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. And think about if it was you and everybody around here opening gifts and doing all sorts of stuff and you sitting over in the corner and saying, I wonder if they remember this is about me. Mm -hmm. They come here to this party and I sit over here and ain't nobody even telling me happy birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Remember Jesus, people. He is the reason why we celebrate. Amen? Amen? Let's take the Lord's Supper. God is good, family. We are getting ready to go into another year. Amen? Amen? Another year. I know some of y'all have gone through some situations in this year that you didn't think you were going to make it this far. And here you are in December. And when you were in March, December didn't even look like it was a possibility. Amen? Amen. So tell me God ain't good. Yes, sir. I think we will make a cake for Jesus. Well, you I have that. thought of that for so many years, but I think this year I'm going to do it. Amen. You're here. Amen. And you know why you're here? That's the goodness of God. Amen. The goodness of God. And that is why I say somehow, somehow God works all things for our good. Yes, he does. Even when we don't see it, mm -hmm. he gives us what we need to endure. And as we endure, we learn the lessons that he wanted us to learn. Mm -hmm. Are you all hearing me, family? Yes. And it's not always about getting what we want. It's about learning along the way. Because some of the things that we want, he don't want for us. But he still will use that situation to teach us something. All things work together for good. Amen. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. You didn't think you was going to make it, but you made it. And you need to say, thank you, Jesus, for getting me here today. I didn't think I was going to make it to December. But here you are. Yes. I said last week, you are strong. You are resilient. And with God on your side, you can do all things. Because then that's what the scripture says? Yes. I can do all things through what? Christ. Christ. And we got to walk in that. Because he does walk with us. And he does give us the strength to face things that we don't think we could face. And here you are on the back side of some things that you didn't even think you were going to make it through. But you did. Amen? And as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, you will continue to endure. You will continue to walk through things. You will continue to walk in God's best for you. Even when you don't like some of the outcome. God knows what's best for you. Amen? Amen. And we got to trust his providence in our lives. 
If you're going to trust him, trust him. So that is who we are getting ready to celebrate in a couple of days. But you know, we don't have to wait till <coughs> December 25th to celebrate. That's right. You can celebrate every single day you take in that air. You realize that's another day God has blessed you with. Yes. And that right there is cause for celebration. Amen? Yeah. Every day. So let's go to God and thank Him for Jesus. Because like I say, we are the reason for His birth, death, resurrection. We are the reason. God wants to hear from you. Let's go to him.